Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some new incredible discoveries coming from the red planet, Mars. And specifically, the recent discovery coming from the Chinese rover that sort of suggests that the liquid water on Mars might have existed relatively recently. Ok, not like super recently, not like last year, but possibly as recent as 400,000 years ago. Something that nobody actually expected, but the explanations from the study, along with other explanations, seem to be kind of intriguing, with a few more discoveries coming from other studies as well. But first let's actually start with that rover behind me, Tianwen-1, the rover that technically made these discoveries. Nobody knew what happened to the rover because it suddenly went silent, but recently the Chinese agency confirmed that they believe it's all because of the dust accumulating on the solar panels, and so the amount of energy that the panels are producing is no longer enough. But they haven't lost hope yet. Currently they believe that once the weather changes, there's maybe a chance that the rover will get enough energy and might become operational again. Although obviously at the moment it's uncertain if this is maybe the end of the mission or if it's going to resurrect and become operational sometime later. Either way though, in the last couple of years, it did make quite a lot of intriguing discoveries, with that recent one being particularly interesting. Now we obviously have quite a lot of evidence for the existence of water on Mars, including of course the current ice caps present in the North and the South Pole. But when it comes to liquid water, the scientists have always believed that this is something from the ancient past, possibly billions of years ago. As a matter of fact, there are even signs of various ancient tsunamis that must have happened during the period when there was a really large ocean, with the surface possibly resembling something like this. But this is once again something that seems to have happened billions of years ago, with Mars maintaining its current conditions for the past 3 billion years at least. Nevertheless, even in the last few decades, there have been these unusual signs for potential existence of liquid water. For example, one of the previous NASA missions, the Phoenix lander that you see right here, even provided evidence for what seemed to be strange liquid droplets, potentially salty liquid water, condensing on the robotic arm used by this lander, with certain other water signs visible in the shadow right here as well. Whereas certain other simulations and various mathematical calculations suggested that under certain conditions, Mars can maybe even have liquid water today, although in this case it would have to be extremely salty. Not to mention that the scientists even identified something that resembled some kind of a cyclical seasonal water flow in certain regions including the hail crater right here on Mars. Now it's not 100% certain that this is a result of liquid water, but the signs were always there. There's obviously an alternative explanation we're going to discuss in a few minutes, but for now let's just assume that these were the signs. But signs of obviously not something like this, but more like, like this. Tiny droplets, a bit of condensation here and there, and most likely extremely salty water known as brine water. But in that recent study coming from the Chinese scientists, the scientists wanted to actually explore some of the images taken by the Chinese rover, and specifically focusing on various geographical features located in this Martian plain of Utopia Planitia. And during their observations, they detected unusual polygonal cracks and various polygonal ridges that they tried to recreate using 3D modeling software in order to understand how this could have been formed. And based on a lot of other observations, including chemical observations, they proposed an idea involving water. Or basically, by observing the formation of these cracks and various particles on top of these dunes, including the presence of salts inside the sand, the scientists proposed that this involved some kind of a water evaporation that must have happened relatively recently, earlier than about one and a half million years ago, and possibly involving some kind of a precipitation, maybe even snow, that ended up melting, mixing with the sand, forming a variety of hydrated minerals visible in the picture. And once all of these minerals combined and the water evaporated, they became permanently stuck together, forming cracks visible in the camera, or I guess cracks visible right here. And based on the timing of these sand dunes, it looks like they were formed within about 400,000 to maybe 1.4 million years ago, to some extent cementing them in place and making them much harder than dunes nearby, which was then confirmed by observing this from different cameras all aboard the Juron rover that was able to collect a lot of data before it finally shut down. And it's really the presence of the salts in this case that makes a really strong point. Salts like hydrated sulfates, various opal-like hydrated silica, iron oxide minerals, and even chlorides that are usually associated with liquid water. It would be somewhat difficult to explain their presence otherwise. Although the thing about Mars is that, well, it is a different planet, with very different phenomena and very different effects. And so there's actually still a chance that this is not because of water. And this is related to a recent video you can find in the description, where the analysis of various unusual dunes on the surface and Mars is obviously full of various dunes, 
suggested that many of them formed simply because Mars has phenomena that Earth does not. And one of these effects was actually discovered recently by analyzing various chlorines. Even though this is something we expect from liquid water here on planet Earth, turns out on Mars, highly elevated amounts of chlorines can also be created by nothing but dust. And more specifically, various types of sandstorms that increase the amount of electrostatic effects, which then ends up producing its own types of chemistry. Electrostatic chemistry that seems to be unique on Mars because of its very unusual atmosphere and very unusual conditions. Something that would be more or less impossible on planet Earth. And so likewise, there is maybe a chance that some of these chemical observations and even some of these salts were once again formed without the presence of water. At the moment it's obviously uncertain how this would happen, but in just the last few years we've already learned so many new things about Mars that we didn't know before. And on top of this, we also have to be a little bit more careful when it comes to making assumptions about rover-based observations. They're not entirely super accurate and sometimes cannot really see everything. As a matter of fact, sometimes they cannot see the obvious. For example, this relatively recent study you can find in a description decided to simulate a search for life on Mars right here on planet Earth by using similar robotic instruments used in the current missions. Except here they did it in Atacama Desert in Chile using the formation known as the alluvial fan that's approximately 100 million years old. But this formation was formed in very dry conditions in almost no rain. Something that theoretically is similar to Mars. With their goal being really simple. Find life. Life that we know exists on Earth. Life that should be visible here as well. And though they were kind of partially successful in finding certain biosignatures, the vast majority of the microorganisms were either not found or were just extremely difficult to find, with many even resembling some kind of a false positive, even though they were using state-of-the-art equipment. Although intriguingly, they did discover something they referred to as dark microbiome, or basically microorganisms with unusual classification. But the main point is that it's extremely difficult to detect these unusual biosignatures, especially on a planet that might have very unique biosignatures, even using some of the most advanced cameras we use today. Which of course implies that we still have to be super careful about any observations and any analysis, as most of these observations are still very limited. And the only solution to all of this, the only solution that can actually help us discover or not discover life here, is by collecting physical samples and returning them back to Earth. Which is of course what NASA and ESA are planning for the next few years. And so returning these samples and studying them on Earth would definitely help us confirm this once and for all. But without a sample return mission and without physically being there and studying this, at the moment it's still very difficult to definitively say what's going on here. We simply cannot use similar observations to planet Earth to make an assumption about what happens on Mars. But assuming that these observations are correct and there might be liquid water here, there is then the possibility that once in a while, Mars might actually have liquid water. And it's possibly something that happens seasonally. And very likely, because of very high changes in Martian obliquity. During the high obliquity stage, it might increase the amount of snowfall everywhere, resulting in the formation of these unusual salty dunes, and thus liquid salty water on the surface. And because this is something we believe happens on the scale of hundreds of thousands to possibly millions of years, all of this suggests that Mars once in a while might completely transform and look very different, with low Martian latitudes very likely being perfect for liquid water to exist. With the obvious next question being, what about life? Now assuming that all of this is correct, and assuming that Mars can have liquid water, these regions with potential liquid water would be perfect for any crewed mission to land on, not only because we might find life here, but also because they might contain underground water deposits. And so these Martian low latitudes are most likely to be much warmer during certain periods, and thus be more suitable for life than higher latitudes. At least that's the assumption for now. Maybe it's all just dust. Dust and static. Maybe everything on Mars is actually the result of all of this. Maybe Mars has not had liquid water for billions of years. And maybe all of this is just misunderstood chemistry based on something else. But we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos once there are more updates and more discoveries. Until then, check out previous videos from just the last few months with more discoveries from the Red Planet. You can find the links in the description. And subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt with the Martian design in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.